Hi guys, welcome to the channel. Now, if you can indulge me for 30 seconds, hopefully this bit of information is not only going to save you time later on, but might also save you money in the long run as well, okay? But you may be a writer and thinking, you know, why do I need to know about RGB and CMYK? And I'm going to explain it to you in one minute. Now, on the screen at the moment, I've got two identical documents set up in Photoshop. One is set to RGB and one is set to CMYK. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because I want to show you how different colors react depending on how you're working, okay? So all I'm going to do is I'm going to change the color picker in the top right to the brightest, most saturated red I could possibly pick. There we go, nice bright red. I'm going to take my paint bucket tool. Now the page on the left is set to RGB. I'm going to fill it with that bright red that I've selected, okay? So there you go, that is a really saturated, bright red you know the kind you'd want to see on you know super, uh, superman's cape or spider-man's chest or whatever now using the exact same color i've not changed the color at all i'm going to go to my cmyk page and i'm going to fill it with the exact same red to show you the difference between them both now that red now looks orange and that's because it's set to CMYK. And why is it set to CMYK, which we've covered on the channel before? If you are going to print your comics, they need to be set to CMYK because if you open up, you know, your little personal printer or your photocopier at work, you will see that there's actually only four toners in there. You've got the cyan, magenta, yellow, and K, which is black. So there is a limited, what's called a gamut of colors that you can select. Now, the way that I got my head around this is and this is something that I'm going to show you on the screen now. Now this isn't the technical accurate version of it but this is the way that I explain it to myself to get my head around it okay. Now imagine this color wheel on the screen at the moment that is every color that your tablet, your monitor, your TV, your phone can display. Now we live in an age with a luxury of the devices that we use can have millions of colors like 16, 17 million different colors which is great. The only problem is, is everyone's monitor is different, everyone's phone is different, everyone's tablet is different, so colors look different. But the worst bit is, when you actually print, you actually have a limited version of this spectrum you can select for. Again, this is not completely accurate, but this is the way I got my head around it. So within that grand scheme of how many colors that we've got to choose from, we actually only have a limited number. So colors will react differently when they're converted to RGB to CMYK. And you may be thinking, well, Matt, if that is the case, why don't all color artists work in RG, uh, in CMYK? That way, the oranges and the red situation is never going to happen. And that is a great observation. But some artists will work in CMYK, and there's nothing wrong with that, but some work in RGB. And the reason why they like to work in RGB is it gives them the luxury of doing certain things, especially in things like Photoshop, which I'm going to show you now. Okay, so why do color artists like working in RGB? And it's pretty simple. You can do really great things in RGB mode, like glow. So if you're, you know, you're doing like um, a character that's got, you know, like a laser beam or like a green lantern ring, a sun or, you know, like a, a street light, that kind of thing, it's easier to do things like glows in RGB than it is to do in CMYK. So to show you this, exact same as before but instead of the pages being red i filled the cmyk and the rgb um, channels on these two pages and i've put them into black and i've just changed the mode to screen mode and that's what we use to make glows now on the page on the right i am gonna get a nice big brush i've got a nice big green color and all i'm gonna do is i'm gonna start moving that around making the brush smaller as i do it making the glow nice and bright keep going so if you imagine something like a power ring or, you know, a street light or something like that, you know, you can get some lovely glow effects. Now, doing the exact same thing on the CMYK layer doesn't work. So as you can see, I'm doing it on the other side and it's actually coming out white. So this is one of the reasons, just one of the reasons why colorists like to work in the RGB mode. Now, as a writer, why do you need to know this? Well, if you are you know, starting out in your comic making career, you are probably not going to be working with a Marvel level colorist that knows about RGB and CMYK. So you're probably going to be working at a colorist at the same level as you. And there is no shame in not knowing this, but it may be worth speaking to them and saying, when you do your colors, because I'm planning to print that comic, I need all the colors fit for CMYK. And again, if you are the writer, you're probably project managing this. So this is going to stop you from having to go back to your colorist and go, the colors don't look right. 
need to go back and tweak them, which is going to cost you time and probably money because you haven't communicated what you needed to them before you've actually brought them on board as part of the team. Now, if you are a beginner colorist, I learned a really nifty chick for, uh, trick from K. Michael Russell. And if you've never seen his channel, you should go check him out. I'll put a link in the description to that. He's a great comic book colorist. Now, if you are working in RGB and you're working in Photoshop, there is a way to have a preview mode of CMYK even if you are working in RGB. Now, I only know this for Photoshop. I'm sure you'd be able to do this in Clip and other, other you know, applications, that kind of thing. But, for example, if you are in Photoshop, if you press Control or Command on Y, what that does, it converts that RGB layer that you're working to, that, that preview that you're looking to actually CMYK preview. So you can actually see how your colors are going to look once you've converted them to CMYK. So hopefully that's kind of explained how a little bit how it works again i've just given this a quick overview and you know again there are way more better people out there that can explain it but this is something that you should know that you know if you're planning to print your comic it needs to be in cmyk so you need to make sure that your colors are going to be as vibrant and as bright as you want them to so make sure that they're set up properly before you start coloring them when you get them back from your colors decay so thank you for watching hopefully that's helpful and i will see you in the next one